Now you're listening to From One Sister to Another, or FOSTA, a division of Turning Point Media Group. I'm your host, Jacita Harriet, and for today's topic, we will be discussing how to build wealth with a pure heart and an open mind. On the line, I have China Bethley from the TV reality series, Amateur Millionaires Club. Hey, China, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Hey, Jay, I'm so excited to be on today. I'm really pumped up about it, and anything I can do to empower a nation of people is definitely something that excites me. So thanks for having me on. No problem. Now, why don't you brief our audience just a little bit about the show for those that, that may not know and how they can watch it. Absolutely. We, um, we're we excited that we had an opportunity to do a run here in Atlanta first, and the ratings were so good that Centric, which is a, a BT station, actually picked it up to share it with a larger audience. The show describes and shows the life of 10 African-American, uh, unlikely newly minted millionaires. We've been able to achieve our wealth in the industry of network marketing, and uh, the purpose of the show is really to open up the minds of the American people to another option out there. We know that the economy is struggling when people are going through a tough economic time, and most people really don't know the benefits of network marketing, and so we show them and allow them to come to our lives and see, you know, what it is that we do and, you know, how we've been able to be successful in the middle of a tough economic battle. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, I definitely have a few questions for you regarding that. I'm going to take it one question at a time, okay? Now, the, the next, I'm on to the topic of how to build wealth with a pure heart and an open mind. Now, this next question that I'm going to ask you is kind of of a threefold question. It's in three parts. The first question is, what started you on your path to building wealth? And the other parts are, you know, were there any moments of testing and frustration? And if so, how did you make it through those times? So I guess we'll start off with the first part. What started you on your path to building wealth? Well, you know what? i got to be honest with you. Since very young, I've always been very ambitious. I've always been one that would connect with people who were already where I wanted to be. I was always wondering what wealthy people did in order to achieve their um, their success. And, uh, you know, I, it intrigued me, especially in African-American women, to yes. see them uh, be successful and, uh, you know, connecting with them and finding out what, what did they do. So I think it was something that was already embedded in of me knowing uh, that, you know, it was a part of, of – uh, of the journey for me to, you know, okay. uh, secondly, I wasn't sure. What was the second part of that question? You know, in, the, in on your path to building wealth, um, were there any moments of testing frustration where you might have looked at things and was like, you know what, this isn't working for me, or I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out. Uh, were there basically any moments of testing and frustration? Absolutely. I think and anything that's worth having is going to be some challenges. Most people don't realize that failing is a part of succeeding. It's a part of that journey. And yes. so uh, it was some very frustrating moments. There were some trying times. I didn't really have the support that I felt that I needed from my loved ones. Uh, yes. A lot of people didn't understand uh, what I was doing because it was, it, was, it was against the grain. It was something that wasn't taught to us. And so many times you have challenges of, of not having that support. Uh, you know, people not understanding, you know, why you're taking a different route and so it was it was a struggle it was a challenge and it still is it, it still is it's not a, a walk in the park even with gaining success mm -hmm. without um you know being trained or taught uh, through over the years of, of how you maintain it so yeah definitely I, I would encourage people to expect that anything that's worth having you have to understand there's going to be some challenges involved amen to that now um the next question that i have for you is you know, in the process of, of, of building wealth and trying to have a, um, just make a better life, a better living for yourself, you know, there are times that come up where um, sometimes people are, are consumed by it in the process, you know. Uh, sometimes they may allow it to change their attitude or, you know, they may not, they may neglect the family or they may start becoming greedy. How do you build wealth? What's the, what's the fine balance between building wealth and not losing who you are in the process? Absolutely. I think this is very important. A lot of people get so caught up into the success that they forget how they got it. You yes. know, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer in God, and I know that everything that I have is because he allowed me to have it. His grace, his mercy allowed me to uh, just be breathing as a breast can to survive to even get to a place like this. And so when I know that God has taken me out of the midst of my mess, and set me on a platform, I don't even know how I got there, then I know that I can't be snooty or get to a place where I'm looking down on people because mm -hmm. just as quickly as it came, it could be taken away. Um, yes. So for me personally, it's very important to balance. A lot of people that are successful um, give off 
my energy that makes other people feel like, well, I don't want to be successful because I don't want to, and it's crazy, but I don't, I don't want to be that way. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. I have a negative character that makes you feel like, well, you know what, money brings that. And, and it's not uh-huh. truth, it's just that this is what people, you know, choose to, this is how they choose to handle it. A lot of people have self-glory. They feel like it's because of them, all because of them that they're where they are. And, uh, you know, some people forget where they come from. I come from very humble beginnings, being from New Orleans, Louisiana, losing everything in Hurricane Katrina. Yeah, yeah. What it looks like uh, to be at the bottom. So I, I'm, I'm truly blessed to even be in this position. Yeah, well, awesome. And tell me, and yeah, and I did remember you said that you were uh, a hur- you let you were a Hurricane Katrina survivor. Tell us a little bit about what that transition was like. <laughs> It was like a twilight zone, Jay. I got to tell you, you know, we're coming from being homeowners and business owners to standing in lines to get food and clothes. It was yeah. definitely something that blew our minds. We were, you know, seeking shelter and uh, only leaving with a little bit. So it was, it was, <laughs> it was something out of a movie. So yeah. I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely <laughs> something that I could never even uh, imagine happening again. But I thank God for His grace even still because He kept us covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a journey from, from New Orleans to Atlanta, he provided, he protected. And, yes, ma'am, uh, right. You know, it, 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 it's still something that people are going through. People are still dealing with the aftermath of Katrina. So, you know, I would just say, um, just know that these things that, that I've been through in life, it can happen to anyone. Yeah. And, you know, we want to, you know, always understand that, um, you know, we, we can't judge a situation of a person who may not be in a good place because of a, a devastating loss like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with with something like that, someone that may be going through what it feels like they might have lost everything or they're starting over again, seeing as how you've been able to really come through that and see the other side of that, how would you encourage someone that's going through something like that now? You know, a lot of people make a simple decision to allow the things that they've been through in their life and in their past to hold them dormant and anchor them in their pain. I choose to allow it to fuel me, to energize me, to move past yeah, it, to move that's right. forward, to allow those tests to turn into testimonies. And you just can't do that when you become a victim of it. Some people are just victimized with everything they go through. Mm-hmm. You don't know what I've been through as a child. Well, you don't know, you know what this person did to me. You don't know the hurt that it caused. Whatever happened, God yeah. will put more on you than you could bear. And so what I would encourage them is to just really, really be encouraged to know that, you know, they can make it go. They can still win no matter where you are in life. You can still choose to win. So I would say allow those things that you've been through in life to just encourage you and fuel you and energize you uh, to go to the next level, move to the next level, and ultimately be a blessing to someone else's life and show them that you were able to make it through by standing uh, on feet. And so that's what I would recommend. You know, don't be victimized in what you've been through in the past. We've all been through something. Amen to that. It down to a simple choice of what you're going to allow that test to be in your life. Well, that is really, really great advice, really is. And I'm sure that our listeners and our viewers would definitely appreciate that. Um, The other question that I have for you is, why don't we discuss the concept of uh, network marketing? You know, some, as you know, and I know you've heard this a million times, some people feel that it's a scam or they may feel, if they don't think it's a scam, they may feel like, you know what, how can I be successful in network marketing? You know, I'm not that educated or... Um, I'm not sociable enough. I don't know enough people in order to be successful in this type of business. Great question. First of all, I, I, I got to tell you, I felt the same way. I felt that it was a pyramid scheme. I thought it was sales. I thought it would take a lot of my time. I did not understand the benefits of network marketing. And so like many people, I was very close-minded about the industry. Um, you know, and I, I had never taken out the time to really educate myself. I really was going off of what I heard some other people say. <laughs> you know, I remember hearing somebody say, oh, that's a pyramid scheme. So yeah. Somebody approached me and said, hey, listen, do you keep your, you know, business options open? And I'm like, like, what is that, one of those pyramid schemes? Because that's what I was taught. Yeah, and, right. Uh, you know, after, and not even knowing, listen, I didn't even know what a pyramid scheme was. Mm-hmm. But I heard it, and so I repeated it. But yeah, after yeah. learning the benefits of this industry, I thought to myself, my God, this is what I've been praying for all the while. Uh-huh. An opportunity to leverage my time 
an opportunity to earn an unlimited amount of money. I love helping people. For me, it's a ministry. And so what I would say is educate yourself about the benefits of the industry before you make a, a decision to say no to your future. This has allowed me to retire from an 11-year hair career at mm-hmm. the age of 28. Awesome. This has allowed me to live that free. This has allowed me to be in a seven-figure club, uh, you know, at the, at the, at the, uh, in my 20s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited about it. And uh, really what it is is networking. You come into contact with like-minded people who have vision, who want something more out of life than maybe what they're gaining. Yeah. Uh, it's usually involved in a product that people are already using and spending their money on. And so, for example, you know, we have an amazing Go Green line with our company, and people are already washing their clothes and cleaning their home. A lot of people don't understand that you're already involved in someone's network. Yeah. But you're not benefiting from it. When you go to Walmart and you buy a tie, there are two people that's going to make money off of your money. Unfortunately, you're not one of them. Mm-hmm. Tie is going to get a percentage of your money, and so is Walmart. And mm-hmm. so what we decided to do is take practical things that we're already doing and put them into a system. We shop from our own store. We build legacies that we can pass down to our children. We have distribution lines now like Walmart has. And so uh, instead of shopping in places like that, I'm not knocking any store or any product. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that I've made a wise decision to get all of my products from my own store, whether it's coffee, whether it is nutritional products, whether it's reshaping garments, whether it's skin cares and shampoos, I have a place that is going to give me a superior product mm-hmm. that's going to allow me to purchase it wholesale that's going to pay me every time I recommend someone else to use it. It's just that simple. We do it all the time. We recommend great movies, great restaurants, great services, and wow, we never okay. receive anything in return. And we're okay with that. The network marketing is presented because the, 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 the average person and been trained into a system for 12, sometimes 15 years to mm-hmm. do something a certain kind of way. And what that is is to be an employee for those people that think like we do. We're empowering people to become their own bosses. Yes. Somebody's lifestyle is contingent upon you being into that system to help that dream to come true. So when you're driving down the street and you see that beautiful home and you see that beautiful car that you're admiring, you know, the sad thing about it is nine times out of ten, it could be your boss that's living in that house. That yeah. You're paying for. And that's the true. the thing about it is you and your children couldn't even spend a night in the one night if you needed to. Yeah. Now it's time to really empower and open the minds of the people. What you are admiring is something that you can truly have. As far as educational background, I don't have a degree. High school education, a little bit of college is is, is all that I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it doesn't take that. You get so much personal and professional development. I feel like I have a a Harvard degree, the recognition, the opportunity that I've had to share the stage with life of Les Brown and Lisa Nichols. Yeah, yeah. Events like Miles Monroe that's going to be this weekend. And, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, John C. Maxwell, I mean, these are the type of people that are in our circles without any college degree, but you have some people with PhDs that are unemployed right now mm-hmm. that are having to yep. work jobs and compete with interns. I mean, right. we have to just be a little bit more open-minded in 2012 of the business of the 21st century, and that's network marketing. Yes, yes. Amen to that. Now, um... Tell us with that being said, and tell us a little bit about your M3 and Power or your Millionaire Makers International that I that I was doing some research on your website. Absolutely. M3 Empower is, a, is an empowerment system that I uh, created that's going to really help to empower the minds. It's a training and coaching, uh, you know, system that I coach and train and mentor people all over the world to show them and expose them to what it is that we're doing. Um, you can go to www.chinabestly.com and get more information on it. We do classes and sessions all the time. Um, we have webinar presentations to get more information out to people about really what it is that we're doing. Mm-hmm. We have a simple three-step system that is very, very simplified that even a fifth grader could do it because literally my daughter is in the seventh grade and she's doing this business already. Uh, wow, okay. Doing, and I'm telling you, when you have this type of empowerment around you, the yes. mind expands. And once you stretch the mind, you can never shrink it. So, yeah, um, right. <laughs> it's a system that I'm coaching. So if you need some coaching, mentorship, we also have a nonprofit organization that we just started, Fight for Life Foundation. I'm really excited about it. It's helping not just with breast cancer awareness, but helping to save the lives of the people, whether we're fighting against poverty, whether we're fighting against violence or illnesses, we are really making a difference in the communities. Wow, that was a mouthful, and that was amazing. Um, I am sure that some of our viewers will definitely be able to benefit from that information. And thank you so much for being so gracious and and being willing to share your time with us today. Um, as far as 
as far as wealth is concerned, um, and or being successful, as far as success is concerned, what type of mindset would you say you need or an attitude you should have going into it in order to be successful? Because sometimes in the process of trying to be successful, we have we have, you know, psychological hang ups, you know, we have these hidden insecurities or things that could really, really limit us, you know? And um Absolutely. How would you say what type of mindset and attitude should you possess if you expect to be successful? You know what? I would say you definitely have to have an open mindset. Uh, most people have not been taught what I've learned over the last three and a half years. So you have to be open to change. You have to understand that, you know, don't fear change. Change sometimes, especially when you don't like where you are, mm -hmm. you don't like your circumstances and right. your environment. Understand that doing what you're doing is not going to change your situation. In order for you to gain something different, you got to do something different. So every challenge pre presents an opportunity to change. And so be open-minded about it. I would also say connect with people who've already, who's already doing what it is that you would like to do. Have a victorious mindset, anything you go into, go into with the mindset of winning, being victorious, because our father says that we already got the victory, so we already know the end of this story. Right, the right. Lord says that there's nothing that's desired in your heart that God won't provide to you if it is in his will. So I would say have an open mind, be very passionate, uh, you know, and, and connect with people that are going to help you to get to that place, because they've already got to that place. Right, right. Now, um, as far as, and this is this is this may seem like a somewhat of a controversial question, but you have people out there um, that are in the church, that are religious, that are in Christ, but they may look at uh, building wealth as a means of, uh, well, you know what, that's a little bit too worldly. I don't, I think that that looks evil. Or I don't think that's that doesn't look godly to me. You have some people that that are religious that really think that you know, money at that type of level is evil. How would you try to, how would, how would you negate <laughs> that type of mindset? You know, and how would you kind of, I guess, um, explain to them that no, this, you know, that you have a negative concept of money, money at this level, being successful is a God thing. You know, it isn't evil. How would you explain that to them? Well, that's, that's, that's a good one. You know, one of my business partners is uh, is, a, is a pastor, June Tankard, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and I have so much respect for this woman. Uh, but, you know, this, this, this opportunity, let me tell you something. You know, one of the problems is, is that as we go out and as we build the kingdom of God and as we do kingdom business, you know, a lot of people are broken. They're broken, and they don't look like they have much. And we're talking about our God as a king and yeah. the king of all kings. And we talk about kingdom business and all of this beautiful stuff. And you're poor. You were in poor health. You can't pay your own bills. You can't even be a blessing for your ministry and mm -hmm. financial way. Everybody's going, listen, that's not of God. The devil is a liar. That is a broken mindset. That's a mindset of black. And mm, when, yeah. I'm, when I'm out and I'm ministering to people and sharing, with people the opportunity of health and wealth you know above all things god said that he wished that we would prosper in our health just right our soul will prosper amen and to so that we want to understand that this is biblical principles that we choose to build our business now what you do with your finances see i know where my blessings come from so i know that this has been a blessing from god yes so that i know that what i want to do is make sure that i'm sowing seeds and blessing the lives of other people there are some people that just have different uh they do different things with their money but yeah bottom line the opportunity to gain well comes from God. It does. And if you don't, if, if we don't, if we are fearful of that, then what we're saying is that I can't really be a financial blessing to my ministry because I don't even have enough to pay my bank bill. I'm still having to stand in line to get assistance here and there because I I don't believe enough. My belief in myself and my belief uh, in this financial area is broken. And so what I would say is that it's not God's destiny for us to be broke. Right. I'm not saying that money has to be the most important thing for you because it's not the most important thing for me. But I know that, you know, the word even said that money satisfies all things. I mean, how can I eat if I don't have money? You know, a, a right, man, right. A blessed man is going to leave an inheritance, but not just for his children, but, but his, his children's children. 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 So right. We have to position our minds to get away from the oppressed mindset, the mindset that's been put upon us to live in lack, to live in, in a place of, of, uncomfort, of uncomfort, of of being ill and sicknesses and all of that. And we have to bind those things up and uh, really begin to release prosperity and, right. and health among our lives in Jesus' name because, you know, it's just not uh, what we need. And how can we attract people? How can we build ministries? How can we go out and do outreach when we don't even have the resources to do so? Right. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, guys, I'm out and about.
about if you hear me in the background, I have someone just passed by you. Now, that's a word for the day. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we want to understand that money is not evil. The law of it is. The law of money is the root of all evil. But it's not the finance itself. It's not the, 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 the wealth of it. It's what you choose to put above it. You don't want to make money your God, but you want to know that your God is able to provide all of your needs. And so if, if he puts an opportunity in front of your face, don't run away from it. And then you still on your knees praying. God has answered your prayer several times. Right. Of the stuff. He's already giving you everything you need. He's already exactly. Providing. What you want to do is thank him now and thank him in advance for the things that he's doing in your life. Right. You have to really understand biblical principles that come out of that new mentality of oppression and begin to do something different. Or we're going to lose some generations. And what I mean is when you got the people that's of the world, they have all these fine things, and it looks like they're living in the kingdom business. They right. Look like they're living in kingdom wealth. Look like they're the ones that are going on. These are the things that's enticing the people of the world. So we need strong men, uh, men and women of Christ to stand up and say, "Listen, baby, you ain't got to do that to get this. God is providing all of this right here. I give glory to Him because I know without Him I'm nothing." Yes. So we need more people to stand up, come up, and rise up a generation of people before we lose them to the people of the world. I mean, that's just what it is. Yes. Yes. Wow, that was that was awesome, and that was all truth. You definitely were speaking nothing but the truth. You know, and the truth definitely shall set you free. Now, um, the last question that I have for you, uh, we covered it a little bit. I just wanted to give someone some just some basic, you know, practical steps to start with, as far as um, you know, what are um, building wealth for the twenty first century? What are some just some basic steps to start off with, as far as building wealth for today's generation? Great question. Great question. You know, I call network marketing in the business of the 21st century. My particular company that I chose to, to partner with, you know, it, it connects with me. It's based on faith first. As the foundation of everything we do, yes. family, which is very important to me, and lifestyle. That was enough said. Well, the products that I connected with, I realized the stuff that people need, antioxidants, amino acids, um, you know, the health and wellness side of being that I'm a breast cancer survivor, that was something that I needed for myself. You have to understand that the people that are doing things the way we did business 20, 30 years ago, they're not getting the same outcome. You know, going to college and getting a degree and working up, you know, in that field to the top and retiring after 30, 40 years off of 30 or 40% of what you couldn't make it off. Yeah. It's just not the American dream anymore. Yeah, definitely. We're helping people to come into ownership. Ownership. Leverage your time. You want to be your own boss. You want to come into ownership and entrepreneurship and understand that there is a place for you to succeed. God has given you a gift and you don't want to put it in the box where you know, you can't spread your wings and fly where you have to continue to ask and you go to the bathroom or can you, you know, go to your child's event. Yeah, that's I know. what I believe that we should be doing right now. Right. The fear that's in the way, kick fear butt out of the way. Step on me because fear is not real. It's false evidence appearing real, but it's not real. Yes. That is not a God of fear. So the enemy wants you to be in a doubt and a place of lack and a place of contentment and a place of oppression where you're constantly being told what to do because if somebody else is thinking for you, they know brilliant ideas that God has already put in your mind could never come into fruition. And so what we want to help you to do is come to ownership. Let me tell you something. I started my business with 300 bucks that I really did not have. Yes. And I took the chance and I stepped out on feet. That $300 investment changed not only my life, but the people that was around me. Now, mind you, the people that was around me didn't get it in the beginning. And if I would allow them to condition my mind to be complacent in, in, a, in a place of going through a system that made sense, then I wouldn't be here. But I can't kept going and I kept pushing. Because I did and they saw me do it, they were able to look up and identify and say, well, if she could do it, now I believe that I can do it. And so we need more people that's going to be willing to answer the call, that's going to be willing to step out on faith, that's going to be willing to kick us out of the way right. and do what's necessary so we can break some of these generational curses and build some true, true legacies as we build the kingdom of God. And so that's what I would say. Uh, you know, understand that the business of the 21st century is here. Right. You know, network marketing is definitely, because think about it, if I wanted to open up a Starbucks or a McDonald's or, you know, uh, you know, a chain, I need some money. You do. <laughs> don't have the money. Right. Network marketing, my company allowed me $300 to come in for the top package and get all of the bells and whistles. $300, when you think about it, even if you don't have it, you can put your hands on it if you needed to. If you knew that you can get Okay, if you knew that you could actually purchase the car of your dreams for $300, I promise you everybody on the line will go and find that money. 
Yeah. And the artist of the company that I was with, we allow you to actually not tell you what car you want. Whatever that car is, we have the compensation piece that's going to allow you to actually build that wealth to gain that. Now, will it take you a year? Will it take you two? Will it take you three? Who knows? That's to you. But ask yourself this. On your job that maybe you've been working for 10 years, is it anything you can do within a 12-month period to double your salary? Is it anything that you can do to, if you're earning $4,000 a month, to next year, this time be earning eight thousand dollars a month most likely not nope. and in fact if you're not your boss's boss boss probably is not either so what is it going to take for you to double what you're earning right and that's right. what marketing we leverage our time it's not just based on my efforts it's based on the efforts of the people that i help so unlike corporate america where i'm training the person that's going to replace me and then give me the boot yes and i have a pink slip the person that i'm training i'll forever benefit from because i'm supposed to it's a win-win yes yes but thank you so much respectfully for gracing us with your wisdom and um we may have covered this earlier but where can our viewers uh follow you on the web you can also you can follow me at Twitter at China Bethley, just like it, it's spelled out China with the Y, C H Y N A B E T H L E Y. Uh, Facebook China Bethley, as well as well as my website www.chinabethley, B E T H L E Y dot com, and uh, we can connect. Once again, I do mentor and coach, and I'm always in the communities empowerment and really exposing people to the truth about what it is that we do and how I leverage my time to be involved now in ten different businesses. Um, that I'm really passionate about music being one of them with my husband and I. Um, you know, Light Switch Entertainment, Bout Cloud Production, Prophecy Music is what we're doing. So yes. this has allowed me to leverage my time to do things that I really, really enjoy doing, like being a mom. And, and uh, that's how life should be. Right now, and she gets prepared for volleyball. Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm excited about that. All right, you've been listening to From One Sister to Another, and I'm your host, Jacita Harriet. And thank you so much, Miss Bethley.